And that's why we got interested in graphene, because graphene is, in fact, a single atom thick material. And it's one that, um, it, there's, as I mentioned, there's a lot of exciting properties that graphene possesses. Uh, one of them is that it's mechanically very robust, so that's important for a filter. And, uh, and so what we've been doing is we've been trying to poke holes in a sheet of graphene that if you, if you were to push salt water through, would reject the salt, but allow the water to flow. There's sort of three ways that we're trying out in my lab to make these holes. One involves purposely making them too big and then carefully filling them in. Another involves trying to make them exactly the right size from the start. And then another involves starting with material that doesn't have any holes and then carefully ripping it apart, right? And I'm using these, these words like ripping and drilling, but what I really mean is chemistry, right? Chemical and thermal energy. We put that into the system in a controlled way and we make these holes. The permeability of that filter would be hundreds of times better than the current polymer filters that are in use today, hundreds of times. And what that means is you can get a very large energy savings. So you could get, depending on the type of water you're filtering, you can get up to 50% less energy use in pushing the feedstock through the filter. Three issues with desalination. One is you have to spend a lot of money to build the plants. So there's a lot of upfront capital costs to make a desalination plant. But second is that there's a lot of operating costs. And those operating costs involve the energy required to push the feedstock. That's half of the operating costs of a desalination plant. It's just the energy to pump the feedstock through. So if you can lower that energy by 50%, you've got a game changer on your hands, right? And then the third challenge with desalination is that those filters that are made out of polymers actually foul. They don't last very long, so they have to be replaced very often. And so what you, what you would like is to replace them with a more robust material, a, a material that's resistant to fouling and or resistant to cleaning, like with chlorine. And those are both properties that we think graphene possesses. Um, the, the challenge really in this problem is in making large quantities of these graphene-based uh, membranes and also controlling the formation of holes in the membranes. That's really the challenge. And, um, and so, you know, one of the things that we care a lot about is whether we're working on a problem in a way that can scale uh, to the sizes that are needed for uh, real applications. And if you look at desalination plants, right, a typical sort of large desalination plant will have about 40,000 membranes. Each membrane is about, at least look like tubes, which is about a two meter long tube, which has inside of it wrapped up 40 square meters of active membrane. So that gives you a sense of the scale. So we need to be able to make these graphene membranes at that scale, and we need to be able to make it at the cost of the polymer membranes. Otherwise, it's a non-starter. Right? So we're actually working on that in a very focused way on starting with a type of graphene that has the potential to scale in terms of cost.